Yo, man, I wonder why people trade the great rewards for petty pleasures. But your motivation. Really, man, my philosophy's gotta change before my finances change. But your motivation. Man, if people really knew what life beyond, they'd never say the sky was the limit. But your motivation. I really wonder what motivates people. I know, right? Let, Let me ask the world, what's your motivation? From the crew hood and home to body, mind, soul. Few truly shown, they know what they lies for. Who could have known that they fought the right war? Have you even chose yet the cause you fight for? Is it night fights at night for cash to buy ice? Or just trying to find a grind to support a nice wife? It's like staying true coincide with paying dues. Shady dudes, she to eat. Who knows? It may be you that they jack and pack and heat. They motors cold hearted, see tyrants breeding violence in the streets. They all started as a motive. Caught chasing that showbiz. This game they show kids is evil. It show is. Man, he battled plenty of thoughts to go wrong. And jotting a whole song, but watch as he grows strong. Slaying and praying to stay away from falsehood while obeying my faith until the day it's all good. So only seek a meal, others conquer whole nations. Keep it true, caress. Together, we were talking about uh, the popular verse uh, there in 2 Timothy. Uh, 2.15 is that 2 Timothy study to show yourself approved unto God and uh, but we really dealt with that passage in its context we really dealt with it in its context and hopefully you were able to get something good out of that amen and uh, that was an interesting message uh, thank God for brother Moses I uh, was able to put that on YouTube, and uh, my wife and I was watching it the other day. It was really, really uh, interesting message. So those of you who want it, I can forward that email to you. Amen. Praise God. But um, today, I want to talk about uh, s revolving around the anointed life, but how we need the anointing for our journey. Amen. And my objective... Uh, hopefully is accomplishable uh, by uh, lesson conclusion that you become power players today. Amen? Come on, say, I'm a power player. Power. Amen? In other words, you count in the schematic of God's plan for eternity. You are not just in the dugout or in the uh, bleachers of life. You are not just simply a looky-loo in uh, God's plan for eternity. Come on, say, I count. Amen? Got to be a power player. Got to be a power player. I was watching uh, BT yesterday. I was watching this uh, gentleman. Uh, you know, they do um, the black power players. And this uh, gentleman, you know, you all know the Ford Taurus, right? You heard of the automobile, the Ford Taurus, right? And... Uh, you know, there was major layoffs and, uh, and you know, um, they had to get uh, a lot of the uh, dealers, Chrysler and so forth, they had to get uh, government monies. I forgot what they call it, but they had to get government monies, right? But, um, uh, yeah, Ford didn't get any. They didn't buy, they didn't go for it. They had their, they had another plan. Their plan ended up, you know, they had to lay off a lot of people, but... Uh, this black, what they call power player, uh, came with a new design for the Taurus, uh, for Taurus. And uh, there's, there, on the graph of success, theirs is escalating. Uh, everybody else, you know, all the other uh, dealers, they're suffering. But Ford right now is doing exceptionally well because of this engineer that designed this new uh, Taurus. And... Uh, is selling really well and it's a black guy so I was really impressed to hear it he was a power player come on say he was a power player in other words he did something that counted in life it's unfortunate uh, the Bible says 8 and 12 the book of Proverbs I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions that we have access to the creative ability of God and we're not putting out if you will 
uh, these kinds of inventions and these kinds of creativity uh, that will generate uh, the wealth that God has made available to us. Amen. Isn't that what the scripture says in uh, Deuteronomy 8 and 18? I, I give you power to get wealth so that I could establish my covenant here in the earth realm. In other words, I'm trying to give you some ideas so that you can get the wisdom because the, the wisdom, right, the, the monies, the, the, the wealth of the righteous or the wealth of the unrighteous is laid up Y'all going to help me with it because I'm trying to get it together. <laughs> Y'all going to help me? <laughs> Anybody know their Bible up in here? <laughs> so the bottom line is the money is there. Amen. 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 Right? Even in the middle of a recession yeah. and an economic crunch and crisis, yeah. the money is there. Amen? Yeah. And who knows where the money uh -huh. is? Who knows where the money lies? Who knows where the money is hidden and tucked away? Who knows where the treasure is? Yes. Who knows? <laughs> James 1 and 5. If a man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men, what, liberally, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. But let that man ask in what? Faith, nothing wavering, for he that uh, doubts or wavers like the wave of a tree driven with the wind and, and tossed, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Amen? So it is in the wisdom of God that we can get the wealth that is available and we don't get stuck, amen, on stupid. We're not bound by the poverty that is all around us. Amen? We're not bound by the negativity that others are reeking around us. Amen. We're sticking with the word of God that is able to put us over and able to see us through. If you believe that, come on, get radical for a few minutes and give God radical praise. So I just need to introduce to you uh, the point. And the point is um, we need to study, we need to stick to the word because the word of God is going to preserve us and the word of God is going to take us to the wealth. Yes, yes. What did I say? It's going to take us to the wealth. Not only that, the word of God is going to make us power players. Power player is also an individual that affects the lives of others. You have people on your job. You have neighbors. You have family members that are broken, bound, disgusted, depressed. And you're supposed to be the effector. You're supposed to be the one that's supposed to be bringing change or opportunities in their life for change. Amen? Come on, if you believe that, put your hands together and give God praise. So let's get, let's get down to it then. 2 Timothy 2.15. Father God, we thank you for your word. It's your word that's going to put us over us. It's your word that's going to see us through. Father God, without the word of God, we are failed miserably. And so we thank you, Father God, that you will show us how to live this anointed life so that uh, in our aura lies the saturation of the anointing. And anybody that bumps into us in our destiny, along our destiny travel, and along our journey will be affected by the anointing. Amen? And so we thank you now that this word that you've given to me, Father God, will be communicated with clarity and with exactness. And the people of God will learn something literally from the Bible and then they'll get a revelation for their situation. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Alright, 2 Timothy 2.15, have you located that? All right, we tried, we, we did uh, exercise some uh, good hermeneutics last time, and we gave you a cultural background, we gave you historical background of this text, which was our central text, uh, second chapter of 2 Timothy, the 15th verse. It's a very popular passage that we often just shoot off at the mouth uh, without really having a clear understanding, without having uh, the substance of what God is really trying to communicate here. It says to study to show your Self approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then it says, as the 16th verse is going to be our underscore today, it says, But shun profane and vain babbling, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. 
Now, let's just examine for a moment. The Bible says, uh, they. They is a plural pronoun and is referring to something uh, that preceded. And what preceded said profane, right? And what? Vain babbling. <laughs> so we need to look at profane and vain babbling. Because uh, if we don't understand what profane and vain babbling is, we don't know whether we're doing it or not. <laughs> we don't know if we are in it or not. And uh, very clearly the Bible says shun. That means to resist with everything that is in you. Everything. When you see it, go the other way. It means to repel profane. Profane is anything that is ungodly. Come on, say ungodly. So any kind of behavior, attitude, philosophy, theory that is not godly. And when we say godly, God hasn't put his hands on it. It's not anointed. Come on, say it's not anointed. So we sometimes we got to be careful because we participate and we engage in things that are not anointed. This the, the litmus test for growing in the anointing is indulging in things that are anointed. If they're not anointed, the test is repel it, shun it, resist it. Amen? And so uh, being around anointed people, being in an anointed environment, studying the word of God which is anointed will cause your anointing to increase. And why do you need the anointing? Because there's oppression around you, there's bondage around you, and there's things around you that will try to hinder you from where God is trying to take you. So you need to be able to resist those things in the, come on, say, in the anointing. So now, uh, it says here to shun profane. Profane is anything that is trifling, anything that is ungodly, anything that is not sacred, anything that does not have the sanction of God upon it, anything that God has not underscored, anything that God has not put his, his signature on, anything that God has not approved. Amen? Come on, say approved. That's why right before that it says, study to show yourself approved. You need to show yourself anointed. You need to show yourself sanction of God. Only God can put his signature, his autograph, his John Henry on your life and on your purpose and on your destiny. And if God is not doing it, now you're in vanity. So some of us think we're having an awesome life, but you're in vanity. There's no purpose to it. The word vanity is the word come from the word void of purpose. It has, has no meaning. It, ha it doesn't count. You're truly not a power player. You're out there perpetrating. You think you're all right, but you're not in the sky in the schematic of God so you're truly not a power player you're just doing stuff amen and so God wants you to be in the loop of what he is doing as we often used to say when we come up in Kojic you know only what you do for Christ will last only what you do in the anointing counts Amen. Only the anointed life is going to fulfill you. Only the anointed life is going to satisfy you. Only the anointed life is going to fill the vacuum that you have within you. Amen. It can't be done through any other life. Glory to God. When the Bible says, hold your finger there. When the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God. It says, if any man be in Christ, remember Christ is not his last name. Christ means the anointed one. Amen? If anybody be in the anointing, you are a new creation. Amen? So things that you do, behavior patterns that you have that are not in the anointing are profane and vain and mundane and will not take you into the purpose and the destiny that God has for your life. Amen? So let's continue to read here. It said, but shun profane and vain babbling for they will increase unto more ungodliness. So now, vain babbling has to do with anything that is not scripted. If you're talking, that's why today we had you all engaging in the exercise of speaking the word. Come on, say, speak the word. <laughs> Colossians 3.16 said, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. Oh, y'all hear me today? 
So, but you can't, you can't speak of what you're not of. Are <laughs> you understanding me today? If you don't have it in you, the only thing you are going to be wreaking, the only thing you're going to be emitting is fumes. And we don't want you to be, you know, like that old raggedy car, glory to God, that lemon, are you, that, are you hearing me, that you're driving through town that's releasing stinking fumes. Amen? Because you don't have the right gas in your life's vehicle. Are you understanding me today? Some folk just go around through life and they're a vehicle, they're a container, they're a vehicle of negativity. Everywhere they go is a negative, negative. Just finding negativity to share about, to think about, to talk about is vain babbling. And the reason why you're full of vain babbling because your fuel tank in the word is on fumes. You're empty. And so the Bible says to, uh, to uh, let the word of Christ uh, be in you richly. In other words, be saturated with the word. People that are full with the word of God, they're not going to be always negative. Are y'all hearing me today? They're not going to be doubt peddling. And they're not going to allow the affairs of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, the cares of this world, the lust of other things overwhelm them because the word is governing their, their inner man. Are you hearing me today? And then so it begins to govern their outward activities. And we're going to see this in the word of God is going to be very clear to us as we look a little bit more at this. Look at Colossians. Hold your finger there. In uh, Second Timothy, but let's look at Colossian, um, and let's examine a couple of passages here as we work on preserving the anointing. Come on, say I'm anointed. Come on, say I'm appointed. Come on, say and the devil is disappointed. Come on, say I'm anointed. I've been appointed, and the devil's disappointed. So you have to resolve that first of all you anoint. You're not trying to be anointed. Amen. Hallelujah. God put his hands on you. He sanctioned you. You are set apart. You are consecrated. You are sanctified. Remember we read that last week. It says if any man will purge himself. Remember that 2 Timothy 2 and 20. If any man will purge himself. Then he's sanctified and prepared for the master's using. Amen. As a vessel in the house of God. And so you are, come on, say, I'm anointed. anointed. So you need to begin to start being cognizant and mindful that you're anointed. And so if you are anointed, you're not going to lie. Well, how can you be anointed having a cigarette in your mouth? I'm anointed. One pastor said someone invited him to go and have a... Uh, a liter, he was out of in the country, another country or something. They asked him, let's go smoke a cigar and have a liter. A liter is like a, a you know, a liter of beer or a liter or whatever. Because, you know, was, he said, I'm a pastor. How can I, how can I get off having a liter or smoking a cigar? He said, he said, this is what you do. If you could imagine Jesus having a liter and a cigar, then, you, then it's all right to do. But if you can't imagine it, uh, scratch that. Are y'all hearing me today? Come on, say scratch that. I ain't going to get a whole lot of cooperation from y'all, but I ain't going to get a whole lot of cooperation. But whatever it is, Jesus was anointed because the Bible said in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Yes. who went about doing good, healing all oppressed of the devil. See, he needed the anointing to deal with the oppression of men. Amen. Guess what? You need the anointing to deal with your oppression and to, to deal with the oppression of men. Amen. Come on, say the anointing. the anointing. And so what I want to do today, I want to draw our attention to what is necessary for us to be power players in this, in this realm of oppression, in this realm where there's magic and witchcraft and sorcery, where the enemy has got you sedated and got you bound and got you going through life like a mummy with a ball and chain on your ankle rolling through life, glory to God, listless and lifeless in the doldrums, not knowing how you're going to get over. Are you hearing me? today. I want you to deal with that spirit, glory to God, 
that comes to cut off your destiny, that comes to cut you off in your purpose, that comes to cut you at knee level, glory to God, that you're not able to move forth in the call of God that is upon your life. If you understand uh, uh, any amount of what I'm talking about, give God some praise. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. To draw your attention to the anointing, come on, say, I'm anointed. Amen. So then certain behaviors that I have is, is, is important for me to watch my behavior because I'm anointed. If any man be in the anointing, he's a new creation. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't try to talk to me about what I used to do. As a matter of fact, my past have changed. The Bible says all things are passed away. <laughs> So don't hold my past against me because God has given me a new past. Oh, you understand me today? Uh, you know, no, Dr. McClellan, I remember when I, that, that's old hat. I'm a new being in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Come on, say I'm a new being in Christ Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. You got to understand that. Because if you don't understand it, you are going to have, uh, what they call that, uh, scoliosis in the spirit <laughs> your back is going to be like this bent over through life scoli are you understanding me today you better lift your head up and know amen uh that in christ he from the curse of the law being made a curse for me for it is written cursed is every man that hangeth on the tree so that the blessings of Abraham. come on say i'm wreaking blessings i'm not wreaking a curse come on tell somebody yeah Amen. But if you if you are not doing the word, if you're not filling up on the word of God, guess what? You're going to be emanating the curse, the energy of the curse. You, that's what some people are. They just, you know, they they're speaking death to their life. Glory to God. God has already redeemed you, but but you well, all that's coming out of your mouth is vain babbling. It's not even word. It's not what God said. Amen. 417 Romans says uh, even God which quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were you got to say what God said about you regardless of how ugly your situation look yeah. come on so you got to speak that word but you can't speak what ain't in you that's why the devil got you you know like a deer in you know your eyes bulging and the light coming at you are you understanding me then because you don't know what to say. Because ain't no word in it. Come on, say so you got to draw from the word. And if you are not feel, if you're not saturated, if you don't have in your treasury the fullness of God's word, then ain't nothing coming out. So I'm, I, we're, we're having a revival today. We're, we're returning you back to the Bible, back to the word of God, back to the Logos, back to the, that which is scripted, that which is documented. We're taking you back to sound doctrine in the word of God. Because the spirit of Philetus is trying to pull the rug of the word of God from under you. That's why the Bible said you've got to study to show yourself approved on the God. Because you ain't going to get it all trying to show up on Sunday morning and say, Pastor, you better give me something or I ain't coming back next week. Ain't going to go down like that. Oh, you're hearing me today. You got to study Monday. You got to study Tuesday. And you come to Wednesday Bible study. But you got to study Thursday. And you got to study Friday. So the devil ain't taking a day off. He gonna whip on that head every day of the week. You ain't got no word. Don't be, I'm fighting the devil. You're not supposed to be fighting the devil. That's a done deal. Jesus accomplished that on the cross. It's done. The Bible said James 4 and 7, all you need to do now is submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee running as one in stark terror. Sticking his tail under his behind and running. When you submit yourself therefore to God, Come on, say our fight is not with the devil. Our fight is with our lazy self because we don't want to study. And so our members are just gone. They done gone wild and reckless. Our members have gone astray. They done gone wild. They done lost their mind. Y'all know the movie's crazy. Our members done gone crazy. 
Amen. That's why the Bible says, uh, uh, let your vessels be vessels of righteousness and vessels unto honor. Sixth chapter of Romans. Y'all to study that whole text. Because you've got vessels. You've got members. You've got instruments within you. That's where the war is. That's why we try to get you full with the word. Because you get saturated, permeated with the word of God. The glory to God. That's what's going to come oozing out of your mouth on every occasion. But if you ain't got no word, ain't nothing but some fumes coming out of your mouth. And all the devil got to do is press the circumstance button on your life. Circumstance, break down her car. Circumstance, uh, she, uh, can't pay her bill. Circumstance, put a little sickness on her body. And then, Pastor, I can't come to church. Pastor. <laughs> press the circumstance button on your, come on, tell your neighbor, the devil ain't going to press the circumstance button on my life. Not another day, not another hour. Come on, tell somebody. You keep pressing that circumstance button and, uh, and I, I get the call on Sunday morning Dr. Sims Pastor I can't come the devil press the circumstance button on my life I can't come to church today the devil done press the circumstance button on my life he know my, he know my weak point he know the pressure points glory to God are y'all hearing me today uh-huh where are we Colossians 3 uh-huh it says right there in the 16th verse uh, let the word of Christ let the word of the anointing come on say the word of the anointing see see we got to stay anointed yeah don't try to lay hands on me with last year's anointing don't try to prophesy because you had it like that five years ago try to work no miracles because one one time you had, you were consecrated and fast and the Holy Ghost used you about 10 15 years in 19 and 78 you know I remember when no this is the dawning of a new day didn't you read the confession of faith <laughs> the dawning of a new day and God is doing a new thing you can't use last week's manna for today you can't save it Man, it, it start getting worms going through it and everything if you don't eat it right now. So I need a revelation for my situation right now. I need a revelation for my elevation right now. And I'm going to use it right now because the prophetic is now. Faith is now. Salvation is now. So I'm trying to live on yesterday's stuff. Y'all hearing me today? That's why you got to get saturated every day. Every day. How, many, how often do we need to put uh, gas in that Denali? How often do you need to put gas in that Mercy? How often? Scripture says right there, 518, Ephesians, we'll go to that. Amen. It says, be not drunk with wine, wherein is in excess. I'm going to help you all with that because y'all want to run away with that one. But I will help y'all with that maybe on another occasion. Amen. <laughs> in his excess but be filled yes. with the spirit yes. Yes. speaking to yourself in, in, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart unto the Lord God wants you to be drunk in him drunk in the anointing and when you get drunk you don't care about other folks around you acting a fool it don't matter because you're acting a fool yourself in the Holy Ghost Yes. See, you care too much. That's your problem. You stressing out uh, because of other folk acting a fool, and you can't control other people's lives. Amen. See, that's why you're stressing. Amen. I can't quite control them. Amen. And so it becomes a problem to me. Amen. Are yes. oh, you understanding me today? Yes. Come on, say so you got to control yourself. You can't control other human beings. You ain't God. Pray for them. Amen. I know I done said something right there that was necessary. That was like, that was a little, that was a little, amen, a little sidetrack there for somebody prophetically. All right, so now look. I'm speaking to yourself inside. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And whatsoever ye do in word or in deed, uh, do what? All in the name of Jesus. And li come on, say, giving thanks. Uh-huh, giving thanks. Uh-huh. 
Well, come on, say the rather the giving of thanks. Where is that passage at? I had that here re recently. Uh huh. Rather the giving of thanks. Ephesians. Hold your finger right there. We have, we're not finished. Ephesians, real quick. Ephesians 5 and 4. Hold your finger there in Colossians because we're going to get right back to it. Ephesians 5. Uh huh. Okay, look at this. Ooh, Jesus. It's, it really starts in the 29th verse, and it could start even uh, before that, because we, we, we're studying in, in text. Come on, say in text. And we're interpreting in context. Come on, say in context. So we, we want to do this uh, exegesis right here. Look at the Ephesians 4 and 29. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed. Come on, say there's something coming out your mouth. Something is proceeding out of your mouth. And James put it like that. Uh, how can you uh, have proceeding out of your mouth blessings and cursings simultaneously? You can't do it. Amen? You can't. So, so either what's coming out of your mouth, glory to God, is vision, is purpose, is destiny, is faith, is word, glory to God, or you over here in curse land. It's one. It's no gray area. It's, it's no foggy area. It's no. Uh, you understand me today? It's black or white. You're either in. You're either uh, allowing to emit out of your mouth and and contaminating your aura, glory to God, with that negative energy, or you are speaking word. The Bible said 12, uh, 32, 33, Matthew's gospel says out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth is going to speak. So what you're full of, see, see, your mouth have no choice in the matter. It's just going to say what you are full of. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ask your neighbor what you full of. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. So what we're trying to do here at the Destiny Center, we've got to have people that are worded. You don't build no church with folks that are. Uh, oh my God. Come on, so you got to be in the Word. Because I, I know I'm a, I'm a decent dude, but you, wanna, you ain't hanging out with me because I'm some decent dude. It's be, it's, come on, so it's because of the Word. The word. You probably, yeah. <laughs> probably wouldn't want to hang out with me if it wasn't for the Word. Yeah. Just, figured, just figured Joel McLeod is just some nice dude. He'll be like, uh, he's all right. I'm a New York dude. I, ain't, I don't deal with New York people. Yeah, he's all right. I don't hang out with skinny guys. Yeah. Yeah, he's just he's too dark for me. I ain't going to be hanging out with him. <laughs> no. Nah. nah. He's all right, but, you know, not somebody I want to hang out with. The reason why you want to hang out, because of the word. He used to tell me, I mean, it's a dad, he used to tell me, you're so heavenly minded, you know, earthly. He used to tell me that when I was 15 and a half, you, you know, that fossil Nesbitt, she knew me when I was like 16, 17 years old. And uh, he used to tell me, you just, you just, your head is up in the cloud all the time. Yeah, yeah. But now they're coming to hear me at my Bible college. <laughs> my youth pastor, amen, from way back in the day, just graduated from our program, amen. Yeah. So it's all right to be crazy in the word. Yeah, some of y'all gonna be y'all crazy. Everybody crazy is who you crazy for. Everybody crazy. Y'all go watch the movie because everybody's crazy. The craziest is who you crazy for. Amen. I'm a loony for Jesus. How about you? You can't serve Jesus conservative. You can't serve him cool. How you gonna serve Jesus cool? All through the Bible said, be fervent in spirit. Be not slowful in business, but fervent in spirit serving the Lord. So the Bible said, the fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous man availeth much. The Bible said in 22, 29 uh, Proverbs, says, uh, seest thou a man diligent in his business? He'll stand before kings. He'll not stand before mean and obscure men. Are y'all hearing me today? Yeah. So you better get crazy about Jesus, because you're crazy anyhow. You just cra just change your allegiance to whom you're being crazy to. How about that? Right. Are y'all hearing me today? Yes. Get militant for him. Yes. So now let, let's finish this up here. Where are we? All right, Ephesians 4.29. So let the no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister 
grace to the hearer. See, the word grace there is the word charism, or, or it comes from the word charismata, which are gifts. And, and we often say men are charismatic, but if they're not under the anointing, if they're not under the grace, grace is, is the fuel that God extends to us from heaven to accomplish an earthly task. You can't do the things of God in, in the earth realm without heaven's fuel. And that's the anointing, glory to God, to get it done because 1027 Isaiah said, it is the anointing that destroys the yokes. It's not how loud you sound. It's not how dramatic you are. It is the anointing. And you ain't got no anointing. You ain't got no word. The Bible said that the word of Christ dwell in you. Let the anointing via the word dwell in you so that when you are moving, it's governing your behavior, your attitude. It's governing how you ought to minister to people, the sensitivity you should have with people. That's the Holy Ghost engineering and navigating. That's the anointing that's in control. Thank you for that one hand of applause. Somebody know what I'm talking about. But you'll see it more here in a minute. You'll see it. It says, uh, watch this now. It says, uh huh, 30th verse, right? Yes. Let me minister grace to the hearers. Come on. So when we talk to one another, let's minister grace. Yes. Minister grace. Minister the anointing. Yes. Come on. I want to get you. I, I don't want you in my face with a bunch of negativity. When you come in my face, pour out some grace. Yes. Let it be anointed. Let it be sanctioned. Let it be a word from God. Let it be sound. Let it be sound theology. Let it be sound doctrine. Amen. Thirtieth verse says, "And grieve." See, because when you don't do, when you when you do anything other than that, you're grieving the Holy Ghost. We yeah, don't want to hear all that nonsense. The Holy Ghost don't want to participate in that nonsense. It says, "You grieve the Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption." Now, watch this. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speak. Come on, say evil speaking. Come on, say evil speaking. Be put away from you with all malice. See, uh, and that's where we have a lot of people around us. They're full of malice. They're, you know, they have it, right? And it all has to do because you are word short. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, your answer is studying. That's why the Bible says, study! Yeah. To show yourself in the word study there in the literal Greek. The implication there is to be diligent. To show yourself ordained, anointed of God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. Amen? You can't do that without his involvement. Amen? So in, in, in uh, 32nd verse, and be ye what? Kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Now skip down, it says, be ye therefore what? Followers of God as what? Dear children. In other words, behave like this and walk in love. Right? As Christ hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for his sweet smell and Savior. But fornication, now watch this. But fornication, uncleanliness, covetousness, let not, what? Let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. Now watch this. What you got coming out of your mouth is going to set a disposition is going to put you in a disposition for whatever that is so before you get to adultery or fornication you're talking it you're talking it are y'all hearing me today oh you understand me today you're talking it you talk there before you gone there if you understand what I'm saying so you've got the answer is in your mouth. The Bible says 1821, death and life, power of the tongue. Yes, 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 right? Yes. Six and two Proverbs, thou art sneered by the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken by the words of thy mouth. So what's in your mouth? What you're saying? Come on, what you're saying? Because you are setting a path to flow in. And that path can be covetousness. That path could be fornication. Look at it right there. It's right there in the Word. And I, I'm going to qualify because read the fourth verse. It says, look, neither filthiness nor fool 
foolish talking nor jesting which are not convenient. In other words, it's not apropos to the word. It's not apropos. You're talking stuff that's not apropos. Oh, you understand me? In other words, it's not conducive to the word. And when you talk that loose talk, it's just not, it's just don't go in, the, in a mist. It begins to saturate your aura. Uh -huh. Are y'all hearing me today? I said it begins to saturate your aura. Come, come here, Pastor, uh, Apostle Lamar. Come here, and, and, and uh, Dr. Sims, would you come here just for a minute? Just, just come here for a minute. Mr. Sims, come here for a second as well. All right, so, you know, this is me. Mr. Sims, would you stand right? This is me. Glory to God. And you know, right now, because you all are in close proximity, you're in my aura. And you know, I... I, know, I don't know about y'all, but to those of you that are super sensitive, when you in, when people are in your aura, you could feel yeah. certain presence. Amen. Oh, you understand me today? And you could detect certain things. Amen? Amen. And not only that, people could feel you. <laughs> you in the big hot, hot rod and, uh, you know, you, people pick up your stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Big Discerner of Spirit, people could discern your spirit. Yes, <laughs> oh, y'all hear me today? It's not one-sided, glory to God. So we've got to make sure, everybody got to make sure that they're worded. That their tank is full. Because when it's dipping down and you're getting to the E point in your word tank, uh, covetousness and all these other things are going to be readily available to you. And your resistance, you know, when you get sick. Your resistance, your defense mechanisms were low. Same thing with word. Your word is low, then you are easy. Cracks over your face, glory to God, without the saturation in the word of God. Come on, give them a great big hand of applause. So the bottom line here is, be filled. Come on, say be filled with the spirit. Be filled with the spirit. And watch what comes out of your mouth, because this is, what, this is how you said to go about responding to it. The fourth verse says, but what? The rather the giving of thanks. So if you can't say something that's Bible and you can't remember any scripture, go to giving thanks. Yeah. Come on, say give thanks. Yes. But I tell you what, uh, you can't rely on that all the time. You're going to have to get some word. Yeah. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, you got to get some word. You got to get some word. So loose conversation, vain babbling, unholy talk, uh, speaking out of an empty tank uh, is all connected to ungodliness. Let's go back to sec go back to uh, Second Timothy where we started uh, from, and let's try to bring a close to it. Second Timothy where we started. It says here, study, 16th verse, right? It says, study to show yourself approved on the God, right? 16th verse said, but shun profane and vain babbling for what? They will do what? They will do what? They will do what? They will do what? And you know what? You might be ungodly right now, but if you don't hurry up and get in the Word, your ungodliness is going to continue to increase. You think you're in some reckless behavior right now, not showing up for church, stuff can get real right. It's not going to just stand still. I'm just standing still. No, ain't no standing still. you either getting better or you getting worse. Amen. The Bible says, if you don't study, your ungodliness is going to increase. So it is the job and it's incumbent upon every leader, pastor, preacher, apostle, prophet, event, to keep God's people in the word. Because I'm telling you, this, there is a spirit of Philetus and Hymenetus that's out there trying to get you to do Tony Robbins. Just come to church and feel good. Put a big old smile on your face and make the people like uh, Dr. Jean Perez. Let me wipe my mouth while we're doing this on the slide. Glory to God. Dr. Jean Perez, I used to be on radio with her. She would say to me, because uh, I was really strict on the radio, I, she said I had a good voice and all that. She was a great, she I had a good radio personality, but I would talk, and uh, when I was talking, it, you know, it kind of came out kind of strict. <laughs> and she said, she said, Joel, uh, smile when you're on the radio. They can feel your smile. <laughs> she said, smile when you're on, they can feel your smile. 
But sometimes I don't want to be smiling. I want to, I want to burn them up and send them to hell. I don't want them smiling. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. But some of us need to be awoke. Cause we, some of us need to be rattled. Amen. Cause we've been stroked so many all this year. The devil has have us in a hypnotic state. We think we okay, and we're not. <laughs> we're on our way to heaven, and we're so glad. No, you're not. You're not. Glory to God. And I'm like, no, you got, that's what you're talking about today, the prophet, that's that prophet nature on me, that I'm going to tell you, whether you like it or not, you can get mad with me afterwards and I'll just love you right into your destiny. Glory to God. But I tell you, you know why? Because when I stand up at that great white throne judgment, I said, when I stand up there to that great white throne judgment, I said, when I stand up here to that white throne judgment, uh, no, the judgment seat of Christ, y'all y'all didn't correct me, see there? Y'all ain't paying attention, Jesus Christ. That uh, judgment seat of Christ, I'm going to have to give an account, amen? I'm going to have to give an account. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? I was trying to find you the, the verse right here. Uh-huh. All right. So, in conclusion, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to give an account. So I just need to share that with you very frankly. All right. So now, so what's the bottom line here? The bottom line is uh, we have an anointed journey that's set before us. But we have to remain anointed. And we lose the anointing. The Bible said, give the earnest heed to what you hear, lest at any time you should allow it to slip or to leak out as a leaking vessel, Hebrews 2 and 1. So the word will slip, amen? And so it's important for all leaders, pastors, apostles, uh, to keep God's people uh, in the word, amen? Keep your hand on the plow. Don't look back. Stay in the book. No matter how fancy the messages come across the TV, and regardless who kind of pretty up the Word of God, is not about the compromise word. It's about the uncompromising, infallible, unchanging Word of God uh, taught to you without apology. Amen? So that you could be able to receive what God has in store for you, and uh, not that you receive anything that is of the spirit of Philetus. Close that out, Second Timothy. Because that's what they were trying to do. Take the people out the word. Let's get the people out of the word of God. Amen. That was the plan. And that spirit still exists. And the Holy Spirit had to check me. Because you know I, I do a lot of stuff on purpose. And a lot of stuff on destiny. And I, God, God gave me a lot of catchphrases. That's part of my apostolic anointing. Is to come with end time themes. And end time phraseologies. And so on and so forth. But we've got to be careful that we don't slowly and gradually get away from word. Those things that are literally scripted. Oh, y'all hear me today? Because it, it, let me tell you something. Thing. It is a spirit. It is a satanic spirit to slowly and gradually get you off of sound word. I need to say that without any kind of dressing. We need to know that. Second Timothy, look at that one more time. We'll bring this to a close. Second Timothy 2 and uh, the 18th verse. Who concerning the truth... Well, back up to the 17th verse. And their words will eat as doeth a canker. And we talked about a canker as that insect that nibbles away at valuable stuff. Amen? Come on, say, I'm valuable. Come on, say, my anointing is valuable. And the enemy will subtly, remember his, his nature to uh, slither. He's a serpent. And so he's not going to come at you and it's going to be just very obvious. He's going to come through a back entrance or through a side entrance. And he's going to nibble away at your coming to church regularly. He's going to nibble away at your reading the Bible regularly. How many of y'all, if you'll be honest, would say that your studying the Word of God has been more on decline than it has on incline? I see some hands. Some of y'all. I mean, be honest, you guys. You haven't been studying as much as you know. Uh, I'm a Bible college student. Y'all should be all in the work. But if you be honest, your study is not as much as it was when you first got saved. Remember when y'all first got saved? You loved that Bible. You valued that word. 
you value going to church highly, the canker will eat away at that if you are not careful. Are y'all hearing me today? And it's a, come on, say it's a spirit. Come on, say it's a spirit. And not only that, it is sorcery, it is magical, and it is satanically engineered. The enemy is not going to say, bam, you're not studying no more. It's going to be subtle, and you're going to have all these other preoccupations, everything taking up your time, eating away at your time, so that you don't have any time in the Word, and before you know it now, you're in vain babbling, you're in profane, and you're allowing cursings to come out of your mouth, then blessings to come out of your mouth, and you are now contaminating the destiny that God has for you. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Give God a radical praise. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. We cry. Knowledge is how we cry. But if you don't use what you learn, you're a powerless mind. Night school plus a couple jobs. Grew all to work. Barely survive. Get fired and resign. Information plus a little inspiration. Anything it takes to recharge a powerless mind. Get it cracking knowledge actions. Many caught in the fractions. Distractions holding your passions. Not make them attractions. You watching the stars. But you ain't reaching that tall. It's like you jocking on the bra. But never seeking the ball. The tiger's iron paw. Got you feeling he fall. Cause you never made a part and then the curtain was called Knowledge with no apps retarded looking for laughs But who acts like that's a mule that's rocking books on his back Like an app when having dreams of you achieving great things But waking to a life for you adults at 18 See patience is a virtue cause laziness is devilish Feel it doesn't hurt you was bathing in its settlement I never pass a rap but that's sincere unless he live his track So get the facts with subtle actions walk a trend that ever lasts Get it cracking, sell our plan and actions overthrow me up Ignorance is Lead the way.